As calls for a ceasefire grow inside the United States tonight, Israel has agreed to four-hour pauses each day to allow aid to get in to Gaza and for civilians to get out. Uh, but a senior Israeli official says that this will only apply to specific neighborhoods in the war zone. Some Democrats, though, say that this is not enough. My next guest knows firsthand just how devastating this violence has been for families still inside of Gaza. Sami Shaban is a Palestinian-American. He has lost 17 family members since this war began. That loss amounts to four generations now gone. Sammy, thank you so much for being here, and I'm so sorry for what is really a, a profound loss for your family. You, we were just speaking, 11 of the 17 members basically lost in one incident. Tell us about what happened to them. Yeah, uh, they were lost, but they were specifically killed. I mean, that's the word. Uh, a bomb dropped on them. Uh, it was ironic because my cousin Abdullah's house, who lives there, told my uncle, it's safer where I am. They're bombing over there. Come to my house. He went there and they were bombed. Nine of them were killed then. Two survivors were my uncle and my cousin. She survived only for a few days uh, going through surgeries where there's no anesthesia. They cut directly into you in the hospital. My uncle survived for 10 days, but he eventually succumbed to his wounds. Uh, he was burned from the head to toe. Um, and, you know, he was one of the best of us. Like he, he was a, a person that from the time he was young was just a beautiful person. He would line up for prayer. He would always be trying to guide towards good. He was always somebody that people looked up to. And so to have that loss for, for me, it breaks my heart that I'll never be able to see him again. Yeah. You also have a lot of family members who are still in Gaza. I do. What are you hearing from them? What are their lives like right now? It's horrible. I mean, they, they see the, the water tanks have been attacked, the bakers have been attacked. There's no access to basic necessities. My aunt, who's dependent on life-saving drugs, is running out of those medicines as we speak. My uncle, who uh, requires oxygen tanks, is running out of that. When they are surrounded, it took four days for my uncle's family to be excavated. And when they finally did take them out of that rubble, they could only pull them out in small burnt chunks. Um, indistinguishable. They couldn't tell who was who, especially the children. They had to lump them together. It's, How many children were there? There was four children. Wow. Um, one of them wasn't even a year old. Oh my God. Um, I have a picture that I shared with you all. In that one picture at a wedding, they all look so happy. Not one of them is alive right now. You have a cousin, my understanding, who was, was, is or was pregnant. Yes. How how she, she, she I mean, she's surviving. She was pregnant. She went to the hospital. They refused her at the hospital. She ended up having to have a cesarean section, um, which, as any mother will tell you, is a very, I mean, when my wife had it, there's a million doctors. There's all these. She had nothing. Um, she went to a small room. They did the surgery. They had to have her out within 10 hours um, of that. And, and now she's had to move several times within Gaza just to be able to survive with these, these wounds. Shortly after having a baby. What is your reaction uh, to this news that there are gonna be these four hour windows each day to allow civilians to move around within Gaza from the Israeli government? We, w you know, as a Palestinian, I welcome it because that's my family, but it's not enough. More needs to be done. There needs to be a ceasefire. There needs to be an end to the blockade of humanitarian aid. These people are dying. They are running out of food. My cousins are telling me there's literally no water or food for them to eat or drink. We need to open this up. These kids have done nothing wrong. 4,000 children have been killed at this point. 4,000. That's more than 9-11. This is a, a humanitarian crisis at epic levels. We need to stop. And it's our government that is partially responsible. And we need to be able to stand up, have the bravery to stand up to anybody in the world and say, you need to stop. You need to stop this. There are better ways to do this. If there was a, a, a mass shooter, uh, you know, huddled in a school, you wouldn't blow up the whole school, right? You, you need to be technical about how you're going to go after this because in the meanwhile, my family members, the innocent people there are being killed. They're being slaughtered. This is turning into a genocide. We need to stop it now. Sammy Shaban, I appreciate you sharing your perspective. And again, I'm incredibly sorry this is, as I said earlier, it's a profound loss, that number of people from your single family. Thank you again for joining us and sharing that Thank with you, Abby. us.